how are these challenges playing out in this this moment, this sci-fi moment, if you will? Sci-fi moment, indeed. Um, well, in the work, in the research that my team and I have done, we've looked at national data sets such as like the Healthy Mind Study and regional and local data, and we see similarities. We see students from historically underrepresented groups, Black, Latinx, and Native American students being more most likely to, to report negative affective experiences related to their campuses, feeling less sense of being valued, belonging, that they're thriving and growing. And we see these patterns among both undergraduate and graduate students representing a broad range of emerging young people being impacted by campuses that are unwelcoming or where they feel their cultural backgrounds and contributions are devalued. Um, I also want to say that while we're focusing today on students of color more broadly who can have shared experiences, uh, we're finding it important to also disaggregate research findings for different racial ethnic groups to help us consider variation in the nature of students' experiences, which may be based in societal images, stereotypes, and historical statuses around the different groups. For example, our work makes salient how anti-Blackness may uniquely impact Black students showing up in their experiences of being treated with fear and suspicion, policing and monitoring, interactions based on anti-intellectual stereotypes. Asian and Asian American students may experience xenophobia, now exacerbated in the current COVID-19 times. Indigenous students often report feelings of in invisibility or erasure, and Latinx and Middle Eastern and Arab American students may be particularly likely to report anti-immigrant treatment, regardless of their actual immigrant status. Uh, while certain groups may have more common experiences, no one experience is unique to one group. And within a group, students may vary in their experiences. So it's complex, but embracing this complexity is really important uh, because understanding the shared experiences and variation that students of color experience can support our efforts to intervene and positively address the spaces, places, and actors that impact them. Um, unfortunately, the intersections of racial unrest, COVID, and economic crisis make these challenges that I just mentioned greater. Um, as institutions move to remote and hybrid, remote in-person learning environments, they still must be accountable for attending to new and different ways that students of color may experience the campus and the racial climate, particularly those from communities that are disproportionately impacted physically, financially, or emotionally. For, for instance, Offensive comments, incivility, harassment, and tokenizing behaviors can still show up in online learning environments or in socially distanced living spaces. So the practices of faculty and structures and staff should incorporate how no knowledge of how these issues may uniquely emerge in these new kind of COVID induced environments. And finally, I'll say that our research also highlights how many students of color draw on their racial cultural ident identities and their communities as a sense of, as a source of strength and resilience, supporting their well being and adjustment, which is something that is missing or harder to do during our COVID times. So, as institutions respond to COVID, they must be creative in supporting culturally affirming spaces and structures such as group organizations access to ethnic studies and cultural knowledge spaces, and also informal opportunities for students to community build with other peers, faculty, and staff of color. It's a challenging time. It is a challenging time indeed. Thank you, Tabby. A horrible, perfect storm.